one. So if we have our character that we've modeled or sculpted or modified inside of Maya, uh, maybe we want to texture it with Photoshop, but we found that making the connection between Photoshop and this character requires some legwork in the beginning. And so what we can do is look at what we call the UVs. The UVs are the maps or layouts of essentially the skin of the model or the character. So under UV, you can go to the UV editor and you'll receive a window that shows you the skin of this character. Now by default, this is a default um, base mesh from Maya. By default, when I highlight this, in my UV editor, I see the UVs for this character. Now they get the, the name UV because we've already assigned X, Y, and Z in 3D space, but along this flat skin here, which this, this piece I'm looking at here is probably this piece on the model right here. Along this, if I were to make coordinates on this skin, I would call the direction U and V. So that's where they get the name UVs. You can think of this as like a pelt, like an animal pelt of your character or your model. It doesn't have to be a character to need UV work. Now, by default, this little alien here that I've dropped in, they did a pretty good job. The folks at Autodesk knew what they were doing, and they split the UVs for me already. You can see that. But if I had modified this significantly, things would change. Maybe you did some sculpting on the character and added some different things. And so, so things would change, and it's very likely that you need to um, manually edit the UVs at some point because because typically the automatic UV mappings don't really work all that well so what we're going to do is I'm going to set this aside for a moment so I'm going to minimize this window under UV we're going to decide where the seams of this this skin go so almost like fabric my example that I keep referring to is the sleeve on your t-shirt it has a seam at your armpit and it has a seam at your wrist it also might have a seam running along the inside of your arm there I know my jacket does so if we go to UV and we drop down to UV 3d cut and sew UV tool, I can see the seams highlighted and I can actually cut more seams and they turn different colors oftentimes the character will depending on the seams I cut. You click and drag to cut seams and you hold control and click and you can drag with that as well to delete seams. Okay, So to get rid of separating these parts. So these individual parts will flatten out in our UV editor. So when I cut a new seam, it should reflect in my UV editor as it did here, that there's a new seam right below the neck there. Now this is already laid out flat for us, which is nice, but a lot of times it's not like that. And after you've modeled, uh, after you've changed and modeled and sculpted on your character, you might want to reset all these seams so that you're not having to hold control and sit here and drag across all of these seams trying to get rid of them all. So what you might do is go to UV and you could choose an, one of these automatic mappings that Maya offers. Now the automatic one, um, sorry, I've got to exit my cut tool first. So you right click and drop down to exit your cut tool. And I'll go to object mode and select my object to use one of these automatic mappings. The automatic mapping projects from six different planes, making a cube around whatever your object is. I don't like 
the UV maps that the automatic projection makes because they're not very usable or readable. If I'm in Photoshop and I want to paint, um, let's say a mustache on this alien, I would have a hard time finding it. I know his head is here, but I can't find his face. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I also couldn't find his thumb if you, uh, if my life depended on it using this map, right? So we really want something easily readable in these UV maps. So what I propose is that you reset them all by going to UV cylindrical, which I find gives you a really weird UV map, but it only has one seam. And that's on the back side of the character. So resetting it like that is useful because whenever I go back into UV and I choose to 3D cut and sew, I don't have to delete all those ugly seams. There's only really one seam I'm dealing with, and that's on the back of the character. That's not so bad to have to control click that. And you can control double click um, if, if your object has loops. So let me find my example. I love this little character as an example of unwrapping UVs because first off, it's detailed. And the UV map is excellent. I didn't make this. I found this on the web. But um, you can see this is obviously the front or back of the character. I think that's the back. This is the front. It has a little belly button. Um, you can see the feet, the top and bottom. They've cut the feet. They've cut the face and even cut little ear holes because the ears are detailed and you might want to paint them separate. They've laid everything out nice and flat. This is super readable. If I was an artist in Photoshop, I could easily understand what, what I'm painting on this model. That's our goal as well. So we're going to cut seams for this model to show um, how I want it done or how you probably want it done so that you can use it in Photoshop. So again, we're under the UV dropdown. And we went to UV and dropped down to oops, 3D cut and sew UV tool. Now it has tool options. If you'd like to see those, click on this box or let go of clicking on this box and you'll get the tool options. There's some things like steady stroke in there uh, that's nice if you're drawing straight lines for seams. Um, but I don't find I need this too often. So let me start with the sleeve example. And I'm going to double click. I'm not holding anything down. I'm going to double click. And I got most of the armpit loop, at least the top part of the shoulder. So I still need some repair work. I'm going to click. I'm going to move around, click. Uh, didn't register that one. Click, and you see the seam is turning white, right? And I'll click here, and the whole arm turns green because it's been cut into a different piece of the UV or different piece of fabric. The UVs have been separated. Now there needs to be one down here at the hand for the end of my sleeve. I'll double click and grab that loop. Now you can see the hand is a different color. In the UV editor, you're starting to see changes update in here. Now, if I had a piece of cloth that made my sleeve and I wanted to steamroll it flat, I would need to cut the cloth long ways, preferably on the inside of the arm so you don't see the seam too much. So I'll double click there. Okay. And I've cut the seam once, twice, three times for the arm. Okay. In this tutorial, I'm probably not going to get through cutting the hands. You might want to look up examples on Google images of that, but it's often cut this way along the fingers and rolls along all the fingers to cut the hands in half. Now I'm going to, I'm going to hurry up for the sake of time and do this quick. So for the other arm, I'm going to double click and grab that loop with a seam, double click. I'm going to choose the inside here, double click. I'm going to take the body and I'm going to cut one at the waistline, just personal preference. Um, the legs work very much the same way as the arms. Okay. See, why am I not uh, getting a seam there? There we are. So I'm just clicking around this, this guy's waist. Click, click, click. Making a complete seam. The legs turned a slightly different color pink. Um, and now for this, I want to be able to paint the front and the back of the shirt or, or body. So I'm going to double click there and grab that, that line. I'm going to do the same on the other side, double click. I've now split this in half if I just managed to split the shoulders. Okay, so I'm going to double click on there, split that line. And I'm going to add a seam around the neck. So now you see the shirt is its own piece. It's turned a different color, right? The back of the shirt will be easy as well. 
double click there it's its own piece okay um, it's a separate piece from the head the face we want to have a seam around the face so that we can paint the face separately okay and you might want to seam on the neckline to lay the neckline out flat separate from the back of the head okay so this character here um, if I finish up the legs which I'm gonna do momentarily this character is gonna be in pretty good shape here I'm gonna add an inseam all these pieces are here in the UV editor but what's going on they don't look like they're ready to be painted or at least I would have no idea yet well here's how we fix that we're gonna rearrange things in the UV editor so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna exit this tool just in my general Maya window so it's at the bottom there exit tool I'm gonna right click and this time instead of selecting vertex edge object or face like we have done we're gonna select UV and we're gonna I'm gonna go to UV shell it's a sub menu UV shell lets me select individual parts that have been cut with seams to deal with them in the UV editor okay so I select a part and I'm gonna zoom out and it's highlighted in the UV editor hopefully you guys can see that it's changing what it's highlighting as I select different parts I'm gonna start with the face by clicking on it in the UV shell mode and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the move tool in the UV editor to move this up and I'm gonna move it up so that I can start organizing a layout for myself so that when I'm in Photoshop I'm having a good time with this and I know what's where and try to use a logical way to lay it out I'm gonna go to modify unfold while I still have that part selected this will flatten the part right it flattened the face there so this I know where the eyes are and where the nose is now, this isn't a high def model so there's not a whole lot going on I'm gonna do that for the arms to show what's going on so I'm gonna move it up actually you know what I'm gonna select both arms at once I'm gonna move them up um, I might select this left arm and choose to rotate a little bit so it's facing out choose the right arm rotate a little bit and I'm gonna choose one and say modify unfold again control U is the shortcut for that you see how the arms are now flat now when I paint them they'll wrap around here the texture will when we paint them in Photoshop that'll be another tutorial linking it actually to Photoshop I'm gonna do the back of the head control U quickly I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that so it makes some sense to me use the move tool to move it up and organize this whole little alien body here control U the feet are gonna be funny if you don't cut them the hands will too um, because of how it smashes them flat it smashes them um, not how you'd expect where they roll over top of themselves but where rather that's like your big toe and your little toe and it goes out to the ankle it's kind of weird if you don't cut the feet or hands in half that's how it does it I'm gonna go ahead and move these down I'm gonna control you them I'm gonna take the front of the the shirt or or stomach if you will control you move that up I'm gonna take the back of the body control you and move that down I'm organizing it how I like you may organize yours differently I'm gonna control you the hands and move them up near the arms actually I didn't control you them control you again I don't like how these hands are flattening but we don't have time in this tutorial to do it so back of the or neckline here I'm gonna control you that rotate it so it's straight and move it in position so I know hey that's the neckline so I'm gonna move the head up a little bit so now I have a nice layout of my alien um, so that I can edit this in Photoshop now you choose you may choose to edit this totally differently but at least I know where all the parts are for myself at this point you will want to make sure you save your work and we'll deal with the Photoshop in the next tutorial and uh, next week